Hello and welcome to the show. I am Joe Toppat. Few characters have left a bigger impact on pop culture than Garfield. Over the years, Garfield has been featured in merchandise, two live-action movies starring Bill Murray, a CG TV show, TV specials, and the comic strip where it all started. If there's one place people love Garfield above others, it was the TV series Garfield and Friends. Although Garfield has been appearing on TV since 1982, he didn't get his own show until 1987. The story of how Garfield and Friends came about is an interesting one. Garfield creator Jim Davis wanted to do an animated series based on this second comic strip, U.S. Acres. The network, however, wasn't interested in having U.S. Acres as its own show, but what they were interested in was a show featuring the lasagna-loving cat. So it was decided that a Garfield show would be made with U.S. Acres thrown in. Each episode would feature two Garfield stories with a U.S. Acres sandwiched in between, thus the creation of Garfield and Friends. Although he had written all of the TV specials, Jim Davis didn't write for Garfield and Friends simply because he didn't have time for it. He was reluctant at first to allow anyone else to write it, but eventually gave in. The result was that Garfield and Friends has become one of the greatest animated series created for Saturday morning. The show was able to remain true to the comic strip, yet created its own ideas that didn't feel out of place. Not an easy thing to accomplish. Before Animaniacs, Garfield and Friends was breaking the fourth wall, making fun of network interference, making pop culture references, and poked fun at popular trends in animation like taking established characters like the Flintstones and turning them into kids. And not only that, Garfield and Friends proclaimed that animation didn't have to be educational. However, that didn't mean you couldn't learn something from it. There were these recurring characters called the Buddy Bears. They were a parody of an old cartoon called the Get Along Gang that taught kids how to, well, get along. I never saw the show, but to my understanding, it valued going along with the crowd rather than being an individual. Not a good thing if you ask me. The Buggy Bears had this song they would sing where they would go, Oh, we are the Buggy Bears, we always get along. And there's a line in it where it says, If you ever disagree, that means you are wrong. Boy, they're kind of scary if you think about it. There was one episode where Garfield actually used the Buddy Bears' attitude against them. You see, he had told them he had already paid them, even though he hadn't. And because the Buddy Bears believed that if you ever disagree, that means you are wrong, they had to agree that he paid them. A nice subtle way of teaching the kids a lesson without being preachy. Other recurring characters included Binky the Clown, Cactus Jake voiced by Western legend Pat Bartram, and Al J. Swindler voiced by magician Carl Ballantyne. Garfield and Friends also had guest stars like Don Knotts and Robin Leach, but the show never over relied on them the way The Simpsons did in later years. U.S. Acres used to have one song per episode, but they dropped that in later seasons, which I found disappointing because they were always so catchy, but I 
can understand they probably wouldn't have been easy to write on a weekly basis. One of my all-time favorite episodes had to involve Garfield stating that they had been getting letters pointing out mistakes the animators had made. So they did an entire episode filled with nothing but mistakes. And this is before Drew Carey did his April Fool's Day episodes and before the Nostalgia Critic did his top 11 F-ups. So Garfield and Friends was ahead of its time in that way. Garfield and Friends was truly a place where fun never ends. Sadly, the fun did come to an end in 1994. You see, the show had been renewed for an eighth season, but the network decided to do heavy budget cuts. In order for Jim Davis to maintain the quality of the show, he would have had to produce it at a loss. And being a businessman, that made no sense. So, him and his staff decided it was best to end it after the seventh season. Even though it sucks that the show never got an eighth season, I'm kind of glad they ended it before the quality went down. Something the Simpsons could learn. You could either watch the series online or purchase the DVDs. I highly recommend you doing that if you're a fan of Garfield. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later.